Lim, you should be able to upload upload and share your slides to the screen now. Sorry, Christina. Oh, you should be able to share your slides to the screen now. We're happy to begin. The recording started. Okay. So can you see my screen now? I can, yes. If you want to yeah. go into full screen mode. Okay. So Christina, can, can I start now? Yes, yep, you can start. Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, ALT CPD webinar. Now I'll just introduce myself. I'm Lim, uh, you can call me Lim. And uh, I'm from University of Winchester, uh, United Kingdom. And uh, today we are going to share this uh, uh, project that we have won uh, the highly commended award last year from uh, ALT Association for Learning Technology. So myself uh, and my colleague, Amy Tan, will be uh, with you to, uh, today. We are going to explore a uh, data-driven teaching approach to enhance a student experience during the pandemic. Now, uh, so first of all, the session today, we have an overview here. I'm going to start with uh, rationale and the challenges and what is uh, data-driven teaching. And then uh, we'll uh, discuss about this uh, student students uh, self-reflection and uh, finally what are the teaching interventions uh, we introduced uh, after we have got all this data now uh, i would say that uh, this project uh, we got it last year as i said just now uh, we have got a highly commended research project award from uh, alt and then uh, last year we know that uh, we are struggling with this uh, pandemic. And I'm sure that COVID-19 impacts on our student learning. And uh, I'm not sure you have uh, introduced any hybrid, hybrid teaching, hybrid learning, or any online learning at your institutions. But uh, for myself and other colleagues at Winchester, we found it is a challenging process and challenging experience last year, uh, whereby when we delivered the sessions, the lectures or seminar online uh, through the teams, and uh, we don't know, we are not sure whether our students are fully engaged in the learning or not, because uh, what we can see is only the screen, the camera, some, some of them did not open their camera. So, uh, I'm sure that uh, every one of us uh, shared the same experience last year. And so the challenges even more for the subjects that we are teaching. Uh, Amy is teaching uh, finance and teaching taxation. These are two challenging subjects, technical subjects. And for example, uh, Amy's module, uh, the finance, we have long-term finance, IRR, and then for my module, uh, taxation, we are struggling to, uh, with all this overloaded content. Yeah. So especially the UK tax is always very complex. Now, so these two modules uh, are year-long module, which means uh, we have uh, delivered the module from semester one, semester two, the whole year. So the first semester we have uh, 12 weeks and then second semester we have another 12 weeks. So what we found challenging, the most challenging is how to engage our students in learning throughout the semester one and semester two. And then how we engage them uh, online and through the uh, or the virtual learning environment or any platform that you are using 
Okay, now, so today we are going to look at the challenges that we have. So students, uh, when they struggle with the two subjects, the technical subjects, they ask for help. And then we need to know or sense the warning signals from them, whether they, uh, any, any of our students, they really struggle with certain topics. And we also want to know whether we have to pause and replay, which means, so we uh, pause a little bit when our stu students are struggling. Uh, so we teach the topics again or explain in further detail so that to help them to understand. Or whether our students, they ask for more exercises, extra exercises, any additional uh, questions are required or not, and uh, whether our students, they, they, they need some personalized feedback. So these are all the challenges that we are facing and what is the solution? So our solution here is we try to identify digital footprint of our students. We want to know whether our students are really engaged in their learning or not. So. The only way we can know is from the system, from the computer, from the, uh, the digital footprint they left on the system. So that's why we use the data-driven teaching approach. Now, so the data-driven teaching approach, uh, as you can see from the slide here, we start from the collecting the data and then we analyze the data and then we, from the data that we have, we make a teaching decision, say, for example, we design our teaching approach, we design our teaching strategy, and then we plan, we reflect. So this, this is a, a cycle. Now, so today we are going to share with uh, everyone here about the data that we have collected, and then we transform uh, the data has been transformed into learning analytics and that is the input to our data-driven teaching. Now, so first of all, we look at the data that we have. Uh, we have uh, set up the weekly formative assessment. We have uh, online quizzes on the weekly basis. And then we also set some question every time we uh, deliver a topic we ask students to, to complete a short survey. So uh, they, they reflect on their learning, as well as we look at the, uh, our learning management system, which is Canvas. We are using Canvas at our university, and then we look at the engagement data and the activities. Uh, of course, we have class attendance, and as well as the uh, interim assessment. So all these are the input, all these are the data, uh, which are very useful for us to inform our teaching practice. Now, so this is an example, a screenshot of a weekly formative assessment that we have. Now, as you can see from the screen, this is um, the, uh, what do you call the quiz, online quizzes. For example, the question here, we have 96% answer correctly. And the other question, uh, only 30% answered correctly. Now, so in that case, we know that the first question is quite easy and straightforward for our students. And then the second question uh, seems more challenging. Now, so from here, we know that uh, which areas that uh, students are weak at. And then uh, from here, we have self-reflection on learning because we believe that uh, students' reflection will be very useful for their learning as well as for our teaching approach to design our teaching approach. So from here, as you can see that the weekly short survey, we have a question one and question two. We ask our student, how well do you feel you understand the topic? So the student answer us uh, from the survey, uh, whether they, they feel very confident or they understand it perfectly or they really need more help. And then question two, we 
we were taking the approach uh, to develop our students to become independent learners rather than uh, they depend on uh, the lecturers to help them. So we, we asked them, uh, what would you do to improve your understanding rather than uh, how can we help you? Okay, so the student is an example. The student answer say, oh, I, now I have the corporate finance book. So I'm planning reread through it and then take notes and, and so on and so forth. So we can see from the response, a uh, student response, they, they take initiative to do something to improve their learning. And then uh, from the engagement uh, canvas analytics here, as you can see, student one and student two, there is a, a difference. So a student one active engagement uh, recorded a 600 over page views and then uh, 30 uh, participation. When we say participation means uh, participate in the online quizzes, okay, and the formative assessment and other learning activities, online learning activities. Uh, whereas the student two, as you can see here, poor engagement, zero participation, and then uh, you have 81 page views only. So from here, we know that which students, uh, they are really uh, weak in, uh, or in engaging, uh, uh, engage with the learning or the online activities, then we start to offer help. So we identify those students at risk at the early stage before it becomes too late. Now, so from here, uh, the student uh, attendance also part of the data that we have been using. So our student support and success teams will contact those students who rarely attend the classes. So they, they offer help and support for them. Okay, now, so we come to the uh, learning analytics and uh, how we are going to make use of the data. So first of all, the engage, we engage the students uh, using the prerequisite settings because the Canvas system uh, allow us to have this uh, prerequisite setting, which means students must complete the learning task of one topic or the learning task you know, in, in one week before they can progress to another week. So we, we make the computer to control and monitor them. And then uh, with the engagement report, they reflect on their learning. And uh, then they also uh, tell us what are the action plans for their improvement, for improving their learning. Now then, uh, how are we going to support our students? We uh, either we reteach the topics or we offer the topic recaps. Yeah. So say, for example, we found that certain topics really challenging that in the following week we repeat it and then we uh, sometimes we give uh, students surprise tests we, without telling them there's a test but only one question one or two questions only then uh, we have a multi multimedia delivery and uh, exam focus revision now i'm going to share with you the examples that we have been using now so the student self-reflection we believe that uh, self-reflection is the key aspect in learning complex subjects. So in this case, uh, we make use of the analytics. Now, uh, before we started the project, at first we, we thought that we, use, we, uh, we are using the data and the analytics for uh, our teaching, designing our teaching strategy. But later we found that why don't we ask students to look at their own analytics, to look at their own learning analytics data and then they reflect on all these uh, analytics. Now, so we find that this will be more helpful to de develop independent and responsible learners. Now, so uh, as you can see from here, uh, the students, after looking at the, uh, the learning analytics, they, they feel that they haven't engaged uh, enough with the content. So for example, the student telling us that, oh, I'm going to focus on areas where I'm weak and, and submit the quizzes on time. So this is the time management. 
And we also found that some students uh, say that they are going to take notes, okay? Uh, they are going to uh, start with the uh, new habit, learning habit, to, to, to have a more note-taking. Or they, some of them say that, oh, I got to improve on my attendance, okay? And uh, I'm going to do more revision. So as you can see from here, students looking at this uh, learning and analytics, they start to uh, reflect on, on their, their learning progress. Okay, so we, we found that this is a very, very interesting uh, finding that we have from, from this uh, data-driven approach on, on top of the using the data for our uh, teaching practice. Now, so the teaching intervention, uh, for this one, I would like to ask Amy to explain uh, how she did it for uh, his uh, her module. Oh, hello. Um, yeah, so because the the project, we use it on two different modules, and I mainly run the finance module. So for my module, I I use the traffic light system, which look into further details about the scores of the different topics. So I use the traffic light system to highlight and the areas that need more attention, which is the one that below 50%. Um, so as you can see that some of the topic students achieve quite high in terms of their their quizzes. So I only focus on the red areas. So I don't give them more questions to do or reteach the topic um, or give them um, Q&A sessions for them to ask any questions to clear their doubt on this specific topics. But again, this is not the only way that we can intervene the teachings. I think Lim has um, his own approach in terms of how to intervene the teaching in the technician modules. You want to talk about the text module, Lim? Okay, now for the taxation, I am using the scaffolding uh, quizzes. So if I notice that certain topics that uh, students are struggling, for example, in this case, uh, you can see from here, uh, I have introduced uh, additional basic uh, quizzes. That means uh, some simple, straightforward questions I introduced uh, before student progress to uh, attempt more advanced and more complex questions. So I, I don't do it for every topic, but I only do it if I found that certain uh, topics that students are struggling, okay? So according to the literature, we, we, we know that the, the speed of learning would be engaged if we started with the easiest questions. Now, so as you can see here, okay, these are two topics, students struggling. So that's why I introduced uh, additional basic simple questions and the quiz for students to, to complete before they proceed to more advanced topics. Now, on top of that, I also uh, created the animation, uh, animated video for students. So to, to, to make learning fun, so, so that students uh, can uh, learn the topic and uh, improve their understanding better, rather than those uh, uh, just look at the PowerPoint slides. Okay, so as you can see from here, I created the cartoon uh, uh, video for my students. Okay, now, then uh, I also use the at parcel, which means uh, this is a integrated quiz, interactive quiz, uh, insert within the video, which means the student, they just uh, watch the video and then they pause with some, uh, they are paused with some question they need to answer and before they, they continue and play the video, okay? So these are additional support I offer to students for those uh, challenging topics. So any question? Now, so I, I'm going to uh, ask Amy to conduct the Q&A session, okay? So uh, can I... Okay, I will go back to this one. Okay, 
Now, so basically, uh, if you have any questions, we can ask and then uh, we can discuss here. So over to Amy, please. Hello, everyone, and thank you for uh, listening to our presentation. So we are now taking questions. If you have any questions that you would like to ask about the project that we've done or you would like to share your um, experience of using data analytics or how, how do you feel about after listening to this presentation, will you consider um, applying um, at institutions? So we are um, happy to hear from you. So you can either ask to unmute yourself and ask the questions or you can type in the chat. So yeah, thank you, Kifa. And Kifa is using more the platform. So you use learner script for analytics. Um, yes, yeah, so um, Kifa, what what do you mean by missing data? You, you can unmute yourself. We can have a chat. It is very informal, which is like kind of like uh, yes, of course. Hello, and uh, thanks for uh, this uh, useful information. Um, uh, missing data means sometimes error in report. Uh, sometimes the students not attend, but it's appear attend in the reports. So I think there's uh, errors in database. Uh, and I search a lot for the best uh, le uh, reports analytic uh, plugin for model but I, I didn't see any uh, solution. So if anyone from attendance or you can help me choosing the right app for analytic reports. I, I think I think this is the, up to the institutions. And so like at uh, Winchester, we do not use Moodle, we use Canvas. So the analytic um, app that we use is actually part of Canvas analytic um, learning analytics that is embedded in Canvas, it comes together with Canvas. So we have this um, data, it links all with the attendance and the student engagement, how much how much they engage with the specific modules. Um, so I'm not, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not able to answer about the Moodle app <laughs> because I do not myself use Moodle. Um, okay, thank you. Thanks, Kefa. Yeah, so we have a question from Richard. Uh, Richard will interest in whether you feel if monitoring page is a good measure of engagement. Um, whether it is important to remember there's only part of the picture and it has some limitations, technical, is question. Yes, I, I, I totally agree, Richard. Uh, we, of course, although this, um, the, the, the data that we see, it shows us to the engagement, but it might not show the overall picture because say for instance, a student might view the page so many times, but the view, it just it just means that they click the, the materials and it will be counted as per view. Some students might uh, click it once and download it and then print it and then they do it offline. So the data analytic might not be able to capture overall through picture but it does give us um, a side post of whether any students they don't actually engage at all because at Winchester we use the data in two way either the student engagement is really low so we will um, we have this support and success um, team to contact the students but if it is just a case that student just click it once and download it and then print it out and do the revision offline that's fine but also we also look at the views is the number of views is really high it would show that the student anxiety level because they they feel unsafe if they don't click click it so we, we look at it both way one is to engage the students but also to to give us an early sign of whether their well-being needs supported um, yeah so we do it that way. I'm not sure whether I've answered your questions correctly, Richard. And if not, then please do let me know. Thank you. So, um, any other questions, or or would you think that you will actually after 
I'm not sure whether how many of you actually currently using data analytics as part of your learning curriculums or activities, but if you haven't, um, we will be um, we would like to know that whether you will find it interesting to use it after today, after knowing that the data analytics can give us a more insight into student engagement. Or you actually use different types of um, different ways to monitor student engagement? Or what was the experience during the pandemic when we had to deliver everything online? So how do you keep track of the students' engagement? No. Do they think we, we, it's just a small group of people here, perhaps you would like to share with us uh, your teaching experience or a student learning experience with us during the pan pandemic? And uh, how do you find uh, the session today can uh, give you some ideas or you have any plan in the future to, 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 to uh, use what we we are using now to integrate in your teaching strategy perhaps you can share with us Lim Amy, if nobody has any further questions, I'm happy to end the recording now and we can leave the conversation to carry on maybe on Twitter or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. So in, in, in that case, if you don't have any question, uh, I have my, uh, I can leave my email address here. If you'd like to uh, keep in touch and uh, you can look at the chat in here so you can always contact myself and Amy if you like to proceed further with this uh, data driven teaching approach so this is my email address I'm typing mine perfect thank you very much Okay. Then if you're happy for me to end the recording now, I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, yeah, I think we... Thank we, you. We so thank you so much, everyone, for attending the session today.